I love doing this at about this time of day the sun is just gonna just going down and I'll come and just stand and listen to the traffic and and just enjoy a uh, enjoy a moment um, alone the cars running well very very well in the previous part of this story I drove the restored Land Cruiser 105 1600 kilometers to Pretoria to arrive here now I have to convert a plane station wagon into a camper tourer type thing now my it's not this is not a conversion I'm going to find products that I like some are brand new so I'm kind of trying them for the first time that I think will suit the vehicle really really well I want to keep it simple but I also want to increase comfort and practicality around the camp and here this is quick pitches um, factory in Pretoria and they have three products that I particularly like the look of and to be honest with you all three of them I, I've seen the drawings, I've seen little bits of video, they've just been released on the market right now, but I like them because, well, I think there's something special here. It includes a rooftop tent, an awning, but I am told that it's something, something really, really special. And I've decided not to go with a traditional drawer system, instead, a self-contained kitchen. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and then traveling to the remotest parts of the world. Quick Pictures Rooftop Tent is new on the market. I uh, know little about it. It will, like all of the others before it, um, make its mark on the industry and go into competition with manufacturers like Easy Orn, Alu cab, but the devil is in the detail. What makes a product like this really, really good? The way you live with it, the way it treats you. Not just the way it looks or how practical it is. So I, I'm gonna have to go on a proper camping trip to be able to report and do a proper review on this tent. But what I can tell you right now, is that because of this strip here going the entire length and this strip here going the entire length for the first time that I can see a roof tent manufacturer has actually designed it with the idea that the tent is the roof rack why have a roof rack that is 100% covered in a tent? And most tents, you need a rack, then you put the tent on top, then you attach the bits and pieces onto the sides of the roof rack. But the rest of the roof rack is taken up by tent. This is a roof rack and a tent, or it's a tent and it's also a roof rack. Because my goal is, Maximum roof rack total weight under 100 kilograms. A few days later, I left the vehicle with them for them to do the installation, and here it is. All right, basically, it consists of Quick Pitch with a shade, their new awning, the Quick Pitch rooftop tent, and the kitchen unit. That's basically what they've done. I've still got to put in the electrical systems and things like that which will now be added to the vehicle at some time in the future. So I've selected the 56 litre Snowmaster dual door. Yes. I have it in my um, Troopy in Australia and I have been told it'll fit and I don't think it will. I think that space is too small. Let's see. That sticks out a lot, eh? Those hinges. <laughs> So I'm going to leave now with the vehicle as it is. I would have loved to have spent more time getting to know these products. I just do not have the time to do that in Johannesburg this moment. So they'll be, um, I, when I get back to Australia, I'll have a closer look at the products, obviously not on this vehicle. And then the first big trip for this vehicle is scheduled for July 2020. But before I leave town, 
seat covers. Many of you that watch the channel will know that I have a particular favorite seat covers. I'm actually a little bit fussy about seat covers because, well, some make you sweat, some absorb sweat, some are just very heavy, some kind of are okay, but they don't fit nicely and they don't look particularly nice. Some are, look gorgeous for the first year and then when you wash them, they don't look very good after that. And I could go on and on. So and that's why I, I just keep coming back again and again to these guys at Tackler. It's again, it's a South African product. I tried a few of the Australian products. None quite match the quality of these. Oh, doesn't it look good now with its uh, roof rack and tent and everything on? Anyway, yes, where was I? Seat covers, yes. So, lightning visit to Tackler. They're fitting a set that I asked them to make for me. And uh, it's happening now. Actually, and this time I'm taking a little bit of a risk in that I'm trying one of their new products. They call it the Signature Range. And it has a very, very thin layer of foam between the seat and the seat cover itself. And I've been told, and in addition to all its other properties, it enhances comfort. And another one of Tackler's brilliant products. It's called Tack Mat. They're floor mats that cover the entire floor space. Completely washable, incredibly robust. Absolutely love them. And some of them even have sound insulation built into them. I, for the first time during this entire build, I just feel a sense of excitement, but at the same time, disappointment because I now have to leave. I'm leaving the vehicle here and all I really want to do at this very moment is stick around and finish it. Right now the first, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to erect the tent. I have never pitched it before. It is a brand new, it is brand new to me. I've seen a few videos and that's all. So I have absolutely no idea if it's going to be any good. It is a new product made by Quick Pitch. Okay, so that actually it was like a vacuum inside. It seals so well, <laughs> it seals so well, I couldn't open it. But now, actually it's very little effort to lift it. Very little effort. Alrighty, okay. That looks big. It's bigger than I'm used to in terms of just the sheer size of it. So really now guys, this is my first impression of this of this tent. I really... Uh, okay, here's an interesting thing. This is the l ladder. They're not making their own ladder. Thank goodness you're not making your own ladder. Because some of the tents available today, the ladders are a joke. And a lot of people that actually buy those tents replace the, the ladders with these commercially available uh, expandable ladders. Okay, so... Um, okay, uh, all right, I'm going to show you up there now. But first, what I'm going to do first, before I do that, is I'm going to open the awning, because again, first time I've ever opened it, I don't know how long it's going to take me. And uh, I'm going to pretend it's like my old one, just kind of treat it the same way, see if it opens. All right, one, two, three, pull those out, okay, let it drop, grab this and walk, all right, let's see, all right, here you go, it's got four legs, arms I should say, four arms, not the normal three, I wonder why they did that, let's think a little here, somebody Somebody was using their brain when they, decide, when they designed this. Look at this guy here. So it can clip onto any bolt that looks like an eight, probably eight, it might be 10, no, it's, I think it's an eight, okay. So any, eight, any 10 mm bolt. But here's the thing where I think this is really clever. You can take this and so if you've got a pole, okay, if you've got a pole, any kind of pole, and you want to wrap this around the pole, you just do that. You see how versatile that is? And that is unique. That's a unique, completely fresh look at the clasp here. And then we tighten it. And there's the awning. 
Wow, it's big. This is really big. Okay, this is not, not the same as I'm used to. Um, ah, actually, not, not, not too dissimilar. And it, it's much bigger than my previous one, but I'm trying to figure out why it's much bigger. Oh, I think I figured it out. The previous one had one arm here, then another arm here. So it went straight from that arm to this arm. And because this has got another arm, you've got an extra give or take, I don't know, that much? I suppose you'd have to put them next to each other to compare, but this is much longer. This feels, it feels this much longer than my previous one. So that's, oh, I think it's fantastic. I like that very much. Um, pride and press. Now, the next test is, because awnings like this are really good for those people that want a quick shade solution. If I was camping at a beach for a week and a half, I might have something like this. But the thing is that when the sun gets very low, you can't tilt the arms down. And so they have a limited appeal. For people that are on the move quite often and want shade quickly, 270 like this, that's the deal. Okay, so, but the question is, you could see how quick it was for me to open. It was really quick for me to open. I have never opened or closed this before, and I'm gonna time myself to see how quickly I can close this. Oh, but before I do, I've got something to show you. One thing that has been worrying me though, because this has got an upper and lower tailgate and not a side opening tailgate, whether the awning would actually be a problem for this to be open, and it's not but it is touching. So what I would do to modify mine is I would put a little strip of, a little strip of rubber here so it doesn't damage the, but it doesn't interfere at all. And in fact, there is, uh, there's a massive amount of shade behind me, massive. That's a bit bigger. This is much bigger. Every rooftop tent that I think I've ever used, particularly this type, the closed shell type have problems with ladders because they're not long enough and when they are long enough they don't fit into the tent capsule itself the tent isn't long enough for the length of the ladder so then what do you do with the ladder you add an extension to it and then it kinks and it bang and it's a hassle okay and every one I've owned has had that problem and I, I used to think to myself why don't you have an expandable ladder. They're available. They're made in, made in China. They're cheap. And it doesn't matter how high your car, your, your vehicle is. It doesn't matter how high they are. It just doesn't matter how high they are. Look at this. So what we do is, I, uh, right, so we tilt that in there. Now I must tell you, this is the first time I've done it. So I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm actually doing this for the very first time. Genuinely, oh, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Okay, that's how you do it. Right, so now the best thing to do is to hook this on. <laughs> Actually, I'd probably leave the strap closed. Do this first. So, all you do is you take that and you drop that in like that. Yeah, there you go. Simple as that. Simple as that. That's so easy. Okay, so. quick pitch thank you the amount of times I've suggested this to other tent manufacturers just ignore you well they ignore me maybe it's just me so climbing up the ladder into the tent now let's have a look at this tent um, haven't been up the tent before so let's just get it ready Nice, 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 nice. So, I mean, it is, it is impossible to do a proper review of a tent without sleeping in it for a couple of nights, a week. You, you can't. You know, just like this, I mean, it's material is good. Lots of storage space. Up top, I have seen them make it. There's good. I actually thought over the top insulation underneath, but you know, these metal tents, 
get a lot of coldness coming from underneath because they're metal and it's a big thing with these tents if you're not well insulated underneath it can get very cold in them because of that and I know that from first-hand experience and they have got a big dense foam it's about 12 mil covered with a layer of carpet and they've done something and I was watching them make it I didn't see exactly what they did but there's good insulation and this mattress is well um, my guess is it's a very very good mattress um, some of these tents are really really cheap and horrible mattresses um, but you can upgrade them it's not difficult to upgrade a mattress so, I mean what do you think uh, first impressions first impressions are that it's going to be very nice and you know oh you know what you know what where are the power points now the competitors tent that I have used and it's a, basically a sister of the Hercules design um, they have uh, sockets and lights at the side the lights lie down they face up and all they do is blind you you, you can't actually use them because if you're in the tent you know, changing or something you've got this thing blinding you I'm really hoping they haven't made the same mistake with this one <clears throat> so let's have a look okay okay <laughs> okay uh, this is this is going to be better I, I would it's not plugged in so I can't test it it's an LED light let's have a look at there it's got a nice high stalk okay so what you would do with this one is you could um, face it upwards yeah I'm not actually sure so I'm not convinced about the light but then again you know you can't tell uh, with you have to do a proper review I, I cannot tell without actually living in the tent spending night in the tent and um, you can't I'd be guessing so I think it I think it's a better solution it certainly looks better quality but I'm a light up top would be better and I actually use a little those little lanterns but the, those Nightcore LR10 lanterns with a little bit of velcro on it velcro and I stick it up there and I actually don't bother with the lights at all in the tent so so what do you think hey eh? what do you think shoes place for shoes thank goodness a place for shoes one of the one of the problems with any rooftop tent in wet weather where do you put your shoes where do you put your wet shoes thank you there must be other tent manufacturers that have pockets like this in them I don't know mate there probably are I just haven't seen them for myself I think okay here's an idea tent manufacturers I think that you should actually include a pocket on the outside waterproof like a basket enough for two pairs of shoes or one on each side whatever and it hangs on the outside so you can literally stand here and take off your boots and put them in and then put the flap over so they're kind of watertight there's an idea for a tent manufacturer okay quick pitch how about that how about doing that hey okay oh this is an interesting design thing that I've just seen look at the angle of the strut you see that strut it's almost vertical what that means is that you can actually load stuff on top of the roof of the tent and the shocks which can be adjusted not by hand you have to get them pumped up and adjusted but can easily be adjusted to carry loads on top of the tent I think that's the reason why they've made it almost vertical it has an interesting design here on the see the leading edge there you see that leading edge there's no hinge it's actually I watched them while they were, while they were assembling them that's an extrusion the, one of the troubles with, with rooftop tents is that when it's pouring with rain and you're traveling at speed you get such a high air pressure in front of the tent that it actually pushes water into the tent and so unless you've got a really good seal it can leak so you know and over the years it might not leak first year one year two year three year four but eventually the rubbers start to deteriorate and then leaks start no, there are rubbers but in front of the rubbers there's no hinge no hinge at all I think that's I think that's very clever all right now uh, let's have a look in the back 
show you the kitchen unit um, and then I'll time myself putting it away. This is um, actually a kitchen unit. It's not a traditional drawer system because, well, you'll see in a minute. And they've left this area clear for me. And I like that. I'm not going to put another drawer in here because the fact is that I can put six ammo boxes in that space. Six. That's a lot of stuff. All right, so I don't have the fridge. And you saw earlier that we tried to fit that fridge. That was a 57 litre, I think, dual door. Being a dual door, it was a little bit bigger than some of the others. So unfortunately, the one that I wanted couldn't fit. But it's actually designed for a 60 litre. So some 60 litre models actually do fit in here. So um, you need to get that. If you're interested in one of these, you need to contact Quick Pitch and say, what fridges fit? All right, you need it. You need, they need to give you that information because it's impossible for me. But this is, I want to show you this because when I saw this, I just went, oh wow, you've solved a major problem. Like the ladder, you've solved an ongoing problem with fridges in the back of station wagons. Watch this. So that now would be my fridge. It's at this level. I can see into it. Isn't that cool? Kitchen drawer. Prep table. Sturdy enough. Maybe not sturdy enough, quite sturdy enough to chop big bits of biltong, but sturdy enough for prep. And my stove. Other cooking stuff. And I want to put it away. Oh, that was a bit too that was a bit too energetic of me. There you go. And what do you think about this tackler tackler seat cover? Aren't they nice? Man, they're nice. They didn't did a cover cover for that for me. Which was nice because it had some kind of wear marks on the top of it and they sorted that out. These seat covers are fantastic, absolutely wonderful. I do want to repeat <clears throat> that I've never done this before. To me, if you time it and you've never done it before, then it's kind of accurate. It's, it's you know, it's a real representation of, I mean, once you've done it a few more times, uh, the speed is going to be reduced. So if I do it and time it, it's a, very first time and you know it's uh it's fast then well then that's pretty good isn't it it means it's not complicated and i don't have to figure it out so that's really what i'm trying to achieve here so it's got uh let me see okay it's got straps so i need to put my hand over there and grab the straps and pull them down and see there'll be another one here and i think there were three weren't there uh, the two, only two, maybe the third one was the side. You see, this is what's taking up time. There it is, there's the three. So, okay, see how easy this is. So I hope you guys have got your watches going because I don't know how long it's taking me. But, um, okay, this is, all right, that's a familiar way of doing it. Works pretty well, but the slots are a lot bigger. So they're easier to thread slots where you slot this in. Oh, I remember the other one is a bit fiddly bit because they're not quite big enough. But anyway, it's not a big deal. Let's see. Okay, so now three of them. And uh, very nice. Okay, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? There's really nothing to it. Really absolutely nothing to it at all. Um, so they call it a weather shade because I think they're trying to say by the word weather shade that it's not just for shade. It's not just for shade. It's for weather too. So the only way I'll know. Okay, stop the clock. I think that's pretty quick. But I am I cheating? I, it's very similar to my previous one, so I did kind of know what to look for. All right. So packing this away. How easy is it this now? So I don't know how the ladder's going to work because this is interesting because how. Uh, okay, so I, pull, I push it up, do I? Let's try this. Okay, um, all right, push it up. Ah, that's how you do it. Okay, all right. That makes sense. That actually makes sense. 
not difficult to do at all. And then the final one, you lift it out. Okay, that was very easy. That was very easy indeed. All right, again, first time I've ever done it. So, uh, and actually I think this still goes down more. No? Oh, I know what happens. This goes up over here. Okay. And that can now go up there. So, that was uh, pretty straightforward. Again, first time. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to put that in there. So I can... It's so short that I can put it this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Oh! My aim was to get the roof load under 100 kilos. Here now uh, is the actual weight. There. How did, I, how did I do? At this very moment, I have no idea. I reckon I'm within 10 kilos of 100 kilos. I might be, if I'm over, I don't think I'm over by 10. That's my guess. That's the result there. You see it written there? I wonder what, at this very moment, I wonder what it is because, well, I don't know. Gee, that looks big. That opening is huge. All right, let's see how easy this is to pull down. Oh my heavens, that's easy to pull down. That's really easy to pull down. Really easy to pull down. In fact, there's, there's no effort in this at all. Okay, but now here's when very important. You must be able to put it. This is very important with a rooftop tent. You must be able to open it. Even this much is enough. Okay, so that now you can tidy up your stuff. Make sure it's all good. Make sure it's pulled in without this thing, without having to hold it down, which is important to me. Okay, I forgot to put this out. Okay, it does help it. And then close it. All right. Quick pitch, I'm going to make a little design suggestion. That is very fast, very quick, very easy. All right. I'm going to make a little design suggestion for you. And I hope you understand this criticism and where it comes from. You see this handle? It's wonderful. Put another handle here. Because climbing up on here, or on whatever I'm climbing on, to have a handle here to pull myself up to then pitch or close the tent will be a huge help. Okay, I, you need another handle. Just an idea. Just an idea. Okay? I hope that helps. If you're interested, I believe that would be a helping hand. So how did I do time-wise? Pretty good. So I, I, that's it. That's, that's my trip done. I'm, I'm sad to be leaving, actually, to be honest with you. Man, I'd love to take this thing on a trip now. But uh, all other pressures on my <laughs> work and everything requires that I return to Perth. Uh, it's going to be about, it's going to be almost 10 months so I I get, between now and when I get to, to play with it some more. So, you know, my daughter Kate and her husband Cameron and their sailing channel, they're going to be borrowing it to do a few trips, very light trips, not off-road or anything like that. And I said to them they can use it because, hey, a couple of young people like that with a truck like this. And mostly, <clears throat> I want to thank our Patreons. The channel's Patreons. You made this possible. You are making this content possible. You are the guys that are going to make the trips that I'm planning next year uh, to um, Zambia, Malawi, maybe Uganda. Okay, big trip next year. You are making it possible. And for those of you that are not Patreons, Patreon basically is, thank you, Andrew. I'll support all you have to do is support one video that I make by paying a contribution towards one video I make each month. If you choose to support one video, or I normally make four months, sometimes five, if you, even if you choose to support just one video, you get every video. You become one of the family. It's as simple as that. And it's you guys, and you know who you are, that make this possible. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And also the YouTube, you YouTube guys, I know that a lot of you love the work. Some of you, many of you, have been patrons for a while. You've gone away for one reason or another. It's cool. It's fine. Just enjoy the shows. Comment, share, be a part of the community. It's fantastic. Thank you so much 
all of you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, what's stopping you?